Welcome to the Rhythm Skydiving Instructional Series. I'm your coach, Steve Lefkowitz. In this video, we'll talk about the three-way rotating pods. We'll exit in a side body and transition to a star. The transition happens when the diver decides the group is ready and lets go of the front floater. From the star, the front floater turns out to present his legs to the other two skydivers, who keep the grip they have with each other. This formation is called a pod, and the skydiver who turns out is said to be outfacing. Then, the front floater turns back to the star. Next, the rear floater turns out to the pod, and then back to the star. Then, it's the diver's turn. Continue in this way for the remainder of the dive. This is a great dive for learning the skill of being outfacing. Being outfacing presents its own set of challenges, and mastering it opens up a lot of formations and fun maneuvers. Walking the dive. Whether we are using a mock-up or not, we walk the jump starting from the exit count. As each skydiver turns, he continues to look back at the group, never losing sight of them even when he's fully outfacing. Looking back at the group all the way through your turn is one of the keys to successfully turning to outfacing. Also notice Christy and Mikhail don't have to shake Steve once they have the grips. They take firm but comfortable grips like a good handshake. He can see and feel when they take grips on him, just as he can see and feel when they release the grips, which is his indication to turn around. Creeping the dive. We creep the dive starting from the exit count. As each flyer turns out, he keeps his spine straight, looking over his shoulder to see the group, not around his shoulder or under it. Notice also how on the creepers, just as in the walk, all three skydivers are in place before anyone takes grips. When you turn out facing, keep the turn pure, meaning use your arms and legs to fly rather than throwing your hips into the center of the formation. The three-way side body exit consists of a front floater, a rear floater, and a diver. The front floater stands with his right foot about six inches from the front of the door. His weight is on the ball of his foot, with pressure leaning slightly forward into the wind. His left leg is strong and out in the wind. The front floater's chest and hips are already open to the relative wind as he stands in the door. His right hand is on the bar forward of his right foot. His left hand is on the bar in front of his right hand. The diver lets the two floaters get into position before she gets into position herself and picks up the grips. The diver takes the front floater's right arm with her right hand. She takes the front floater's right leg with her left hand. The diver's chest and hips are already presented to the relative wind while standing inside the plane. The diver stands in the door with her left foot forward and right foot back. Her left foot is on the edge of the door, just behind the front floater's right foot. In the front to back direction of the airplane, the diver's right foot is slightly in front of her left foot. Her stance is wide enough to be comfortable. She allows enough room for the rear floater to head jam comfortably. The diver stands with her butt directly over her heels, leaving space for the rear floater, rather than bending over with her butt sticking out. The rear floater climbs out with the front floater, or immediately following the cameraman. He climbs out of the plane with the balls of his feet on the edge of the door, about shoulder width apart. He gets balanced on his feet before ducking his head back in the door, under the bar. This is called head jamming. The rear floater's butt is just behind his feet, but not sticking way out, so his back is relatively straight in a squatting position. His neck rests against the bar, keeping him from falling out. However, there should not be a lot of pressure on his neck. The rear floater's feet and body are angled into the plane about 45 degrees. His front foot is about 12 inches behind the front floater's right foot, leaving room for the diver to set up. When the diver gets into position, the rear floater takes her arm with his left hand and her leg with his right hand. When the front floater is ready and there's stillness from the rest of the group, 
He begins his count. The count is slow and deliberate enough to allow the rest of the group to exit in sync with the front floater. The front floater indicates the exit with a swing of his leg. Out, in, out. On the in, he loads up on his right leg like a spring. On the out, the front floater pushes off the plane, up, away, and a little forward into the wind. He should leap up as much as he can, away enough to give room for the diver to get out of the plane, and into the wind so as not to get blown immediately backwards as his foot leaves the plane. Off the door, the front floater should be almost straight up and down with his hips slightly farther away than his shoulders, at about 30 degrees. The diver and rear floater get into position and remain still, communicating to the front floater their readiness for the count. As the count comes, they may rock slightly with the front floater to help them stay in sync. On in, the diver's weight transfers to her right foot. On the last out, she pushes off her right foot, driving her hips down, away, and a little back through the rear half of the door. She should drive down as much as she can, trying to get below the front floater rather than coming out over or above him. She should launch away just enough to get her hips out the door, and she should drive back to sneak out behind the front floater rather than pushing through him. As she leaves the plane, the diver should continue to drive her hips and her left side down, keeping her body sideways relative to the front floater with her hips slightly lower than her head. The diver and front floater should look at each other as they leave the plane and throughout the exit. On in, the rear floater releases his head from the bar by squatting deeper, not by bending over more. On the out, the rear floater drives his hips down, away, and a little back relative to line of flight. He should drive down enough to place his body below the diver while keeping his chest presented to the relative wind. He should expect to be looking straight up at the group out the door. He should drive away just enough to allow the diver to get her hips out the door. And he should drive back relative to line of flight enough to stay in a single plane with the rest of the group, which will be blown backwards as it leaves the airplane. From that moment on, he continues to drop down and away from the diver. His hips drive away from the plane more than his head at about 30 degrees. He pushes off with his right foot while keeping his trajectory downward and back relative to line of flight. Let's review the dive one more time. Visualize your climb out, exactly where your hands and feet are and where you are looking. Feel the count and see yourself leaving the door, feeling the relative wind pushing against you and flying on the hill. Picture yourself performing the dive perfectly. Take your time when it's your turn to be out facing. Remember to fly yourself into position, watch the group the whole time, and keep arms high and relaxed as you turn out, maintaining a good arch and positive leg pressure. See yourself smiling and relaxed as you fly, doing your best and having fun while you do. You're now ready for your skydive. Thank you for watching the Rhythm Skydiving Instructional Series. For more videos like this, please visit www.rhythmskydiving.com videos. Have a great jump.